Akistats Video Productions presents from the Executive West Hotel in Louisville, Kentucky, the fifth annual Derby City Classic. Along with Danny DiLiberto, this is Bill in Cardona. Danny, the feature matchup uh, this early afternoon is between two of the four players remaining in the tournament. Scott Frost from Phoenix, Arizona, and Dee Atkins from Columbus, Ohio. A little contrast in styles, I do believe. You're going to see Frost be a little more aggressive, going after more shots, where on the other hand, his opponent, Dee Atkins, a more conservative player, a very methodical, meticulous person when he's at the table. A very good nine ball player also. Both of them are, you know, and uh, they've advanced very far in this one pocket tournament, and they both got a loss. So, you know, the loser packs his bags. Now, the other two players that remain in the tournament do not have a loss, and uh, they're playing one another. Jose Perica and Larry Neville, and they're playing one another as we are speaking. Scott Frost won the lag, so obviously he will opt to open up the balls in rack number one. This is a race to three. 298 players entered the tournament. There are only four left. Scott Frost, this is the furthest he's been in the one-pocket tournament, but he certainly has the skills to take him to the finals and possibly win the tournament. And you know, uh, after these two matches, we're going to have three players left, so someone will get a bye. Well, this is a little similar to the way they've been breaking, you know, uh, right? Isn't this like almost the same view again where the guy's first shot is almost take a scratch or something real intricate, nothing offensive? What do he do here? Well, it looks like he has the ability to go to the short cushion underneath mm -hmm. the pack and then into the green six ball. He, I do believe he can do that. So, therefore, if he doesn't have any other options available to him that he likes, I look for him to go underneath the six ball and just softly hit it to the cushion. Now, he's going to reposition the red three ball, reposition the cue ball in the top of the pack like this, or the nine ball, reposition the cue ball in the top of the pack. On that particular shot, if you have a ball that you can cross after the break into the pile and leave the guy in the far corner doubled up on the pink green, I like that shot. This is like a survival shot, and, uh, you know, he's going to eventually have to do something very creative to get out of this break. Now he doesn't have the angle on the three, I don't believe, to go way up there. He may. He, he may be able to bank the three into the 11 if he wants to and go way up to where he's standing right now with the cue ball, double up that pink and uh, green ball. Yeah, I think that's an excellent shot yeah. if he chooses to shoot it. Uh, I do believe he has the angle as well. Banking the red three ball into the red and white yellow ball, which is the 11, repositioning the cue ball, and I'll draw it here for you. This is what Danny's talking about. Backing the three into the 11 ball, repositioning the cue ball in this area right here. He tried to do that, I believe. He missed the 11 ball. The 11 ball you really want to get because that's, that's a, a threat. You know, that's, that's a favoring uh, man from Phoenix here. The freezer, they call him. The freezer, right. Scott Frost. The freezer. Okay, very quickly. Uh, Frost would like to. Uh, fr Scott Frost would like. Let me get the telestrator working. Uh, these people back here are sleeping. All uh, right, that's what I was going to say. Frost would like to reposition the cue ball in this area here. How do you get it there? Well, there are a number of ways, possibly. You've got to take a look and see what's available to get it there. He picked a perfect shot to reposition the cue ball in an ideal area on the table that'll make the Atkins have to work hard to get out of. Anyway, you see how uh, D. Atkins, three shot later, is still trying to get out of the break. That's how good the break is on this particular table. And everybody breaks to that same pocket, so they must have figured it out. Excellent shot here. Excellent shot. I think he, he you know, I mean, could have been a hair better, but he got a, he did it. And that was a very, very good shot. If he would have brushed the nine on the way back, it would have been... Uh, history, maybe. Well, he has two shots that I can see right away, Danny. The one is backing the nine, sending the cue ball one, two, three, three cushions underneath the four, and the other one is just 
Well, that, well, that was a nice shot, kicking the, kicking the seven ball. But you know he made the balls a little worse for him. But the 11 goes. That's the ball that D. Atkins might be sorry he didn't hit when he banked that three because uh, he can't go up there and do any double ups in the far corner again because the 11 sticks out and you know Scott Frost is going to shoot it. So that one's over with. Now, your shot before, maybe he can three rail the nine. I think you got to do something aggressive here or you're going to get the worst. Well, no, no. Scott Frost could have three rail uh, back the nine right back. Look at this. Oh, good shot. Oh, yes. What did you say about age? Very good shot. And uh, once again, you know, he's struggling to get out of this break. No, he can't uh, allow himself to get careless here because this is a situation where if you get a little careless, excellent control of the cue ball. That's a very, very nicely executed shot. But he has no threats in front of his pocket. So that means Scott can do almost anything he wants to do. He, he can't sell out. Uh, come off the five, go behind the 15 and nine. You know, I mean, I, behind it, I mean, don't let him see anything. But he lost the ball a little bit. He didn't want to let him see that seven ball. Because now D is about to get out of the break finally. But keep in mind the distance between both the cue ball and the seven ball, and not only that, the position of the cue ball in relation to that side cushion, which is going to make this shot be a little more difficult to execute. So therefore, once again, he has to be extremely careful prior to shooting this shot. And when he makes up his mind what he needs to do, he has to execute it and execute it well. Great the shot. That was an excellent shot, repositioning balls, balls with the S, plural, on his side of the table and controlling the white cue ball very nicely as well. So therefore, he certainly has done uh, his job the last inning he was at the table. But he can see the three, and I think he can cross the three at the uh, seven and the six and that other ball and then just go upstream. He didn't want to do that. I, I like that better. I would have cut at that and gone all the way back up because now... He really let D. Atkins out of the break, finally. D. might be able to shoot the three and billiard the four. Fourteen there. Well, he didn't want to do that. He moved another ball, but I didn't like that. Did you see the shot I was talking about? He did have a bank at the three, billiard the four, fourteen. But he is out of the break. Uh, let's see what... And for you people out there, uh, the reason why we're not using the Telestrator is we're having some problems with the Telestrator. We apologize for that. I know that you like that kind of stuff drawn out on the screen. But unfortunately, for this one match, I do believe it's only going to be one match, we're not going to be able to use the Telestrator. And once again, we do apologize for that. And, and you know what they call that at the dog track? Many times, you know, when I'm betting a race, all of a sudden they can't get the track I'm betting on the TV and all that. And they call it, we are experiencing technical difficulties that sounds like more professional and that's what we're doing we're, we're and uh, it's a mystery at the moment but uh, our staff is so good I'm sure they'll they'll figure it out looks like he's coming off the 10 ball near the foot spot softly right. rolling on the 14 nicely executed shot with a perfect touch perfect touch he couldn't have put it better with his fingers if he had to pick the cue ball up and place it somewhere that would be where to place it but but on the other hand he still doesn't have a threat near his pocket until he gets something to shoot at it's going to be ducking to survive well, I mean, now he has a shot here but he has to be careful that he doesn't scratch in the side pocket 
the uh, the 15 ball, the ball positioned near the center of the table, the brown and white striped ball, will go in his pocket. The cue ball should go in between the 9, 12, and 8. And he doesn't want to scratch in the side pocket if he opts to shoot this 15. He can shoot this 15 and reposition the cue ball on this side of the right-hand side pocket if he hits it well. But he has to move that, I mean, he has to not hit that pink ball there, whatever it is, and not scratch. Beautifully him. executed shot, yeah, Basically, he sold out somewhat, but when you pocket the ball, you didn't sell out. But you I know, don't I, think he has a shot. You really have to like the way D. Atkins plays. You know, he's a real common sense player, really solid player. He, He's got a good stroke. He's got a good feel of the cue ball. Excellent shot maker. Yeah, he got out of the break, and he's the one running balls right now. Does does the 11 pass? I guess it does. It's close, but close or not, shoot it and try to put him behind the green again if it doesn't go, but I think it goes. He might be going right to the green here. Notice he overcut it. I guess that's the side of the pocket he had to shoot at, and he over uh, he overplayed it. He's going to back the ten into the two, reposition the cue ball up table. Now, once again, you know I believe he can shoot the nine here. If he shoots the nine and he hits the twelve. The cue ball will then go toward the eight, but it, once again, that side pocket comes into play. Yeah, so therefore, yeah. he's got to be pretty careful if he opts to shoot the nine. Maybe too mm -hmm. risky of a shot to shoot at this no, time. No, he'd, uh, he'd be mad at his backer if he shot that shot, I would say. It's got too much risk and too thin a hit to really control, and not an easy shot. So I, I expect him to maybe just brush off the five and come to the center rail, and, but if he leaves him the 11, Scott will have a good offensive shot. So he may have to kick lightly at the green. That might be the, the other shot. See, he's going to go off the five, but if you leave that 11 to Scott, he's got a, a pretty easy combination bank if there is such a thing. But if you hit it like this, I don't know. He left him, he left him just what I said he can. You know, and it's a fairly easy bank because... I mean, combination bank, because that six is just off the rail, you know, that, that space where it's an easy shot. You, you know, you got a big ball. That's what they like to say. I expect him to make this six, but not today. He did have a pretty good shot, but he, he was more uh, thinking of the ducking part. Yeah, you, you really couldn't, uh, as the player at the table, which was Scott Foss mm -hmm. at the time, you really couldn't think in terms of pocketing that go a bad combination. You had to think in terms of repositioning balls on your side of the table, leaving distance. That seems to be where the emphasis should have been put on that shot. Atkins now at the table, and a couple balls now surround Scott Frost's pocket, creating a problem for Atkins. Let's see what he does with this shot. Uh-oh. That's an uh-oh. Well, it uh, looks like Atkins has made a really uh, grave mistake here, Danny. He uh, leads in this first game two balls to nothing, but notice all the balls down this end of the table, and most of them around Frost's pocket. I expect Scott to get about six. He probably will get six. But anyway, you know, it's a shame because Atkins really got out of the break finally. You know, I thought it was imperative for him to play position for this for this 1-11 combination, you know, because he would like to have moved to 1 from that position. Playing position for the 1-11 combination, he would then shot the 1-11, the 1, then the 3, then cross table for the balls. Now it may be a little more difficult unless he attains a shot on the combination now. See, he should have got that combination out of the way first because that 3 was an excellent ball to fall on the blue ball or the 14 ball after you get the combination. But he doesn't have a ball to do that with now. But the way he shot that three ball combination, he just fired it in like it was a hanger. Well, that was because the six was in that position, I said. You know, you know what I'm talking about when that ball's just like quarter of an inch off the rail. Tough to miss it. It's a very big ball. And he... Uh, 
I don't think I would do it. I don't know if I would do this here. You mean kick the ball in? I might bank the nine in this kind of spot. He hit it pretty good, but he he really gambled there because he could have very easily left a bank for D. Aitkins. He he wound up uh, taking the lead four to two. It's Atkins, by the way. I know a guy named Aitkins, and uh, I get you know I get a mix sometimes. This is Atkins, D. Atkins, and. Uh, I never but saw you, him without you, a hat on. But do you know anyone, anyone named Ratkin? No, but you probably do. Or Batkin? Or Edkin? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the Atkins is at the table, and he has nothing more than a, just a simple takeout on the uh, brown ball. I drew this guy a few years ago when he wound up winning the tournament, you know, the all-around and everything. Uh, he plays very, very good. I don't know what he's doing here. This is, I don't think he should be doing whatever he tried, yeah. or at least he attempted. He's looking. He thought he had a two-railer, maybe. And well, just, but you're right. I mean, the combination goes for Scott. It isn't like the combination's way off. He has a chance to make that combination. Frost, that is. He's supposed to just get out of the inning, probably by... I know you would shoot this... Uh, uh, Seven ball. Yeah, there wouldn't be any question in my mind. I what would. is he doing here? He's going to sell out. I don't know. What See, is he he's doing? shooting a three, a two railer, and selling out. I don't believe this. I don't know, Billy. Maybe uh, I shouldn't have been uh, eliminated from this tournament. Look, I mean, how can you leave well, this? I don't know what he had in mind there, uh, but uh, but he he that, left position too. That looked like to me that it was. Uh, Clearly the wrong shot. Well, of course, and he had an angle now to fall on the seven. That was uh, a very dumb shot. And we saw it from the start. Why is he looking at that ball? Disaster can only happen. It isn't like he had a shot he was cinching. I mean, two railers are tough to shoot when you're selling out. And, and uh, his pocket didn't have anything around it. it was, the balls were around yeah. Frost's pocket, so therefore, you know... He's not really not going to get rewarded offensively if he, even if he did pocket right. the ball. Never shoot a, a tough shot to get one and sell out to your opponent three or four balls. That, it's very silly, you know, and uh, now Scott needs one. And he's cutting at this. No, he isn't. He just played. I thought he was getting ready to cut it in, but he didn't have to gamble, you know. Well, what he did do, uh, he chose to break loose the two balls in the center of the table where both of those balls went into Atkins' pocket and neither one of them went into his pocket. So he didn't particularly care for that little layout there, so he wanted to rearrange it somewhat, and that's what he did. Well, the balls are sitting very favorable for Scott Frost. Yeah. In, in other words, uh, D. Atkins needs six, Scott needs one, and look where the balls are. I mean, it'd be awful tough to run out with ball in hand even. Yeah, actually the balls were are positioned more difficult for Atkins on, on Frost's side of the table than they would have been if they were all the way up table. So it's, all, it's almost impossible for Atkins to get the balls the way they're positioned now. Well, he has a shot here if he can avoid uh, scratching in that corner because really now the balls are tied up for Scott, but he only needs one. So it's not a disaster when things are tied up and you only need one, but he does have a shot at this. I like the way he shot that shot, too, by the way. He played more cue ball than ball there, and I think that's the correct way of shooting that shot. Sure. Definitely keeps him alive, but he may have left uh, Scott across. I think he can hit this thin and bank at it. I don't think he's going to bank at it. I just think he's going to move it to his side and just play cue ball speed to the end cushion. Just like, well, he went to the bottom cushion, which is good just, shot. just as good. Once again, you know, you could, you could go cutting at the eight. But you're leading seven to two, and something can go wrong with that other shot. So he decided to put another ball way out of play, make it more difficult for Atkins uh, to get what he needs. Well, he froze on this ball, and, and it's a good thing he did because he would have left a free two railer if he didn't. Scott's just content to get out of inning, and eventually he figures 
Atkins will leave him a shot at the game ball. And once again, race to three, the first game is all important to win. He's going to try to hit the rail between the uh, two balls and not leave a shot. Good control. Good control. Now he may have that bank cross corner with a little inside English, possibly, avoiding the kiss. He hit it. He hit it very well. You know. Now he he puts Atkins in a spot where he can't do anything offensive. He's just got to knock that game ball away from Scott's pocket. I think he, if it slows down, he may have a two railer at the money here. I don't see anything going wrong, do you? I mean, just go ahead, two rail it to the pocket best you can. And the kiss showed up. Yeah, a fairly difficult shot to execute considering how closely he was going to have to hit to that point in that corner pocket. If he was able to stay away from the point, then he had to deal with the kiss. So therefore, a couple of things there he had to be concerned with. Nicely executed bank, that'll, he should be able to get credit for that one. Seven to two and a half. Well, had that dropped, he would have had a bank. Now, Scott might be getting impatient. He's not going to let this guy get one at a time and, and catch him. So he's shooting at the five ball and making it. Good shot. That was game number one. It goes to Frosty. He takes an early one nothing lead in the race. You see that two-railer that Scott Frost got a kiss on? You know, all the one-railers and all that. We all know how to avoid kisses and all that. But that two-railer... It's like tough to figure when there's a kiss and when there isn't. Am I right? I mean, we've all done it. Yeah, because that's the type of a shot that we really haven't familiarized ourselves with because we don't shoot that type of a shot that often. And we just have a general idea that you know, maybe there's a kiss, maybe not, you know. If we would just practice those shots on a regular basis, even right. you know, when we practice, then when that type of uh, shot would, would come up, we would have a much, much better understanding of that particular type of shot. And you know the top three cushion players... No, all those kids. They can tell you when there's a kiss, four rails. You know, they know. I mean, and, and, and they probably could have sat there. You notice he hit the second ball? Yeah, I did notice that. And yeah. I tell you what, that's a very strong break. Well, I'm every break has been strong. Very strong. No, that is a very strong break. Yeah, and that, that break is very strong. He's going to stick and double. Uh-oh, he sold out. That's a very strong break, yeah. You know, he allowed the, the cue ball to uh, get away from yeah. him a little bit. The break was so strong that they, we didn't have to go two, three innings before uh, Atkins got a shot from it. Scott made a careless error the first shot. He's going to draw right the two ball, cut the two in, go to the I, I didn't like that. I, no, I, I didn't either. I like going for the 15, two, and then for the six, if possible. Well, he, he was using the two to get to that ball, and he thought he had an excellent angle, which he did. And that's why he shot it that way. But I, well, well how's well, the combination? I would have played position for the 15, then used the two to get to the six. Now he's, uh, you know, he's limiting himself. I would imagine. But at the same time, he may get all the balls he was supposed to when he got his uh, open shot. What do you do here? Roll it. You don't have a you can't a bank. You don't have a bank, I don't think. If he did, he doesn't have one now. Is it uh, 10? Uh, what is that ball froze on the 5? I mean, is, is that ball, as the Canadians say, wired? I don't know. I don't think that he can hit the 6 where he wants to hit it to make that bank combination. Well, then just bank the 6 on his side and drop down near this chalk. That's all. That's all he's got. Now, see what he did with the cue ball, Danny? That's a no-no. You cannot do that with the cue ball when you have a shot that carried a degree of difficulty as the sticks. It was an easy shot to execute, so it was imperative for him then to freeze the cue ball or reposition the cue ball closely to that bottom cushion. He allowed Frost at the table with a good foot off of that bottom cushion. That is certainly a misplayed shot on Dakin's uh, part. I mean, yeah, he should definitely... He had better control of the cue ball. And, and it's right. so important. That little, you know, shot that goes unnoticed is so, so important when you're playing one pocket. This is a little tricky shot. You know, uh, he, he does have a kick bank at the nine. He can hit rail first, hitting the right side of the nine and bank it to his pocket, and the cue ball will go upstream. But the thing there is, 
it so close to hitting it perfect and the kiss angle that he could sell out. But uh, the way the balls are sitting, uh, Scott may have trouble getting balls even if he had like a, a, a duck to shoot to start with. I like the uh, rail first bank and go upstream. Make sure you hit it on the thin side. I don't think he can get deep, deeply enough into that corner to contact the knife. Maybe not. He would have to spin it a little. Because you know that would be a very viable option if he yeah. thought that he could do that. So therefore, from, uh, from his uh, posture at the table, then he has an indication to me that he can't do that. Well, what is he going to do? He's going to two-rail this and let, uh, let him go with the, the nine? I don't, I don't know what he could do. He well, he's going to draw it back about a foot, Danny. Pretty good hit, but I, I think he left the nine. That's what I thought. I, I, I thought he was just trying to make this ball in self-defense. Then he could have did something with the nine with the thought that Scott has to play pretty well to get more than one, except the uh, ball stopped for a pretty easy bank. He can cinch this and then bank that uh, whatever, 13 or 11, whatever it is. Let's see, see th this was the only thing can go wrong is that ball stopped where he can bank the ball because other than that Scott had one ball to shoot at and I'm sure D Atkins was thinking of that but he got double cross he, oh he, he brushed it a, uh, enough to deflect the cue ball where he has a little easier shot than he would have had if he didn't hit it at all he under hit it it's not reaching Plop, it didn't reach. But there's nothing wrong with this because uh, I think D has to kick one rail and give him that ball, the long rail. And he handled it. Did he go in the pocket? No, that's a great shot. You ever notice that shot comes up many times gambling, and I never see anyone hit it bad. You know, they kick one rail, the long rail. If you're like a half inch off on the when you when you uh, hit the top rail, you could miss the ball, but they don't ever miss it. So I kind of like kicking at the stack at that time. Uh, I think that he would have opened up some balls on his side, and cue ball would up the table. I kind of like that shot, but uh, he didn't do that. Well, he uh, probably thought it's risky. He's not out of the game. It's 3-3. Three, three. It isn't like uh, he well, has to do something. But you're right. I well, like that it's kick to open the ball. It's 3-3. Three, three. I think that shot get, uh, puts him at a very, very good uh, advantage, you know. No, it was. It was a, a good idea to kick there. Uh, he just got up and never thought about it. No, he has to watch about the... He can scratch to his right here if he's not careful. Yeah, way over there. Good call, Billy. It's it's dangerously close to where your backer may get a little heart palpitation there. Is there a word like that? Palpitation? <laughs> well, it sounds like a word to me, you know. We came with a new uh, word this tournament, you know. You know, uh, Pat Fleming decides which match we're going to play. We have a little opinion about it. And the other day, he wasn't here... They called me to look at the matches to pick one, and I said, uh, none of them are accustatable. That's, a, that's definitely a word. Yeah, I, I like it. It explains everything. Well, he's going to play for a bank, isn't he? Unless he's playing for that combination. I don't know why he no. did what he did. That's another shot where you're way better off underdoing it than overdoing it. He's going to two rail this? Or try to. Well, that was dangerous. It, you know, he, he, it stopped behind the pile, but that ball could have came down to where he had a cross bank. But it didn't. He maybe thought of that. Maybe he figured, I'm going to try to snooker him with it, with the pile, and not hit it hard enough. He's going to bank the three on his side and stick on the pile. I call that ducking on the wrong side of the balls. You're really not supposed to get the best of anything doing this because of this. You know, that was a pretty bad shot. 
Yeah, I didn't care for that shot either. Yeah. It gave Frost options then to do something that could have really drastically improved his position, well, which, I which obviously he did. Yeah. I like to tell people that I'm working with never duck on the wrong side of the ball. But there yesterday, are, there, are exceptions. there are exceptions. There yeah. are exceptions. And Parika used one yesterday in a match, and he and turned out to be a successful move. But that wasn't, because now he trapped himself. What does he do here? He could kick at the green ball and try to pinch it, you know, hit the ball and rail at the same time. And but he can also kick behind the blue and white stripe on uh, one on uh, two cushions, like long rail, mm -hmm. short rail, and then hit the blue and white stripe and get that ball away from the position it's lying in now. It's a, it's not a really the, the, the difficult shot to uh, to feel either. He's playing very aggressive. He's banking at this ball, Billy. One railer and going to draw the ball back. He almost hit it good, but it's a see you later, Charlie. He wants to stab the balls. You see that? You know, but he's shown me the real unorthodox way of playing this game. You, know? you mean a lack of knowledge well, about certain I, things? Well, you know, I mean, it's a, maybe I'd rather just say unorthodox. You yeah, know? you're being generous. The, you know, he shot, he, he's been shooting some shots that uh, I thought were clearly wrong, but... Uh, you know, he is advanced to, to the final four in the one-pocket division, and that says a lot about the man's skill and his ability to play the game. But uh, right now, I mean, I think that he's shooting well, some, some very you. difficult shots to shoot. I'm going to say something that's like a little comical, but uh, maybe all those other matches he won, none of the shots came up he didn't know. <laughs> Nothing to say about that, huh, Bill? And uh, it was a painless loss for him, and now he's trailing two to nothing. The Atkins is. And he really actually used bad judgment and gave that game away. Does anyone know the score between uh, Neville and Perica? Uh. I can't see. We're right in line. I can't see the little balls on top of the table, so I can't really tell. They're not playing far away, but I'm snookered by the lights. Here it is. This, this break looks just like this all the time. Right. What do you do now? Again, well, I like what he's doing here because it's hard to come down table and try to remove the A because of the presence of the orange five ball. But once again, he didn't put any threats over on his side. And he ducked badly, too, Bad, by the way. Yeah, he may be able to hit this ball straight on. I don't know. Well, straight on or cut it, it doesn't matter. Okay, now possibly he might be able to do something with the eight. No, he's looking to shoot again. You know, he's already used bad judgment in shooting and in, in uh, spots where he, he's got a two railer uh, to shoot one ball. Bad idea. You know, very bad idea. Never shoot tough shots where you're getting one and you could sell out. What do you do here, Bill? What do you do here? Can he uh, twirl it? Oh, well, he's got some it. problems there. Yeah. Well, he likes it. Oh, he he's got a dead one, he thinks. He thinks something's dead. Yeah. He th I'm going to say thinks because his judgment hasn't been good so far. And it was an almost, but many pool players have slept in the streets from an almost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Position on the nine ball will be his next ball. He should play position for off the green here. Going possibly into the ten or the bottom of the ten. Well, it's tough not to get a shot here no matter what you do too many balls that go and they're all easy shots. D. Atkins has the hope that he gets to the table again because the balls are sitting good for him too if Scott doesn't somehow figure out how to run out. He may even play for the pink four ball here. Nope. Oh, he's all right here. He can, he can make the eight, leave an angle on that uh, 12 ball. Tw the 12 ball and go one rail to that uh, combination. You see that combination? What is it? Uh, 11, uh, 11 seven? 7. Right. Yeah, I mean, that, that looks like it's uh, manageable. Leave an angle on this ball to go one rail. 
Well, I don't like going one rail this way. But he has the one, and uh, I guess it's the 13. They all go, so maybe that's why he went on this side. I would have played for that little combination. See, this is the reason. Now, he might be on the rail with a long shot. Now, all of a sudden, he better pocket the, the ball or Atkins will get right in this game. And he did nicely, and uh, he's cutting at this uh, seven ball. Well, anytime he misses, Atkins is in the game, but he's not going to miss. Oh, yes, he did. This is what I meant. I don't think he had to do something crazy. That's why he should have played for that combination a little while ago. He would have got a few more balls his way. Now, uh, even though he's leading, uh, what, five to one, I say he's the underdog here. Don't you think so? The uh, way the balls see, are uh, sitting. Five. I don't know. I don't know if he would be the underdog here. Two, three, four, five. They, I don't think he'd be the underdog here because the seven's in the pocket. Yeah, but look at all the balls he's going to get. He yeah. can possibly uh, get to six himself right now, or seven even. You know, if he runs this, uh, the 15, the one, the two, and then banks that other ball, he's going to get on the hill. Well, anyway, you, you must admit that Scott used bad judgment there. Well, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say it was bad judgment. He thought he could make the seven ball. If he makes it, he wins the match. You know? I mean, he didn't miss it by far. You know, these guys are excellent shot makers, Danny. They can see the edge of the ball where you and I maybe can't. So, therefore, how many times... Have you saw right. shot shots like that when you were playing your best pool? Oh, you know? uh, of course. You know, so therefore, you know, depending on how well we play determines on what shot selection. But you see what happened here. We yes. choose. Scott well, might not, not get to the. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm but, not. But yeah, you know, yeah. you, you keep uh, you keep dwelling on that. You know. But when it's, anyway, it's the fact he, that these guys can play. You know, and yeah. he wins the match if he makes that ball. I know, and we know he hit it good because it's sitting in the pocket. Uh oh. Uh-oh, I don't think he's going to have a shot here if the cue ball rolls. Well, look at this. He got to where he can get right out now. He's going to take advantage. He, he looked like he was uh, going to pack up and leave. And all of a sudden, now, like I said, I made him the favorite after that shot. Now he's uh, got a chance to run right out, draw the ball one rail. And well, he might even shoot the one. Yeah, there. he could shoot the one right now. It depends on the degree of difficulty. What, this is what happens here. What are you better off doing? Taking a little tougher shot with automatic position or taking an easy shot with tougher position? Well, you know? taking the shot in the 15, if you, tend, if, you, if you want to draw it back, now becomes a tough shot. That's what I said. That's what I said. Are you better off uh, with automatic position? Or something, you got to do something strong to go from one ball to the other. And anyways, now, it's uh, anyways, that's uh, game number three. It goes Atkins' way. He trails in the match two games to one. Uh, well, I don't really find fault what Scott did because he thought he could make that ball. Well, even though it, even yeah. though it was a, a fairly difficult shot, I would, I would have to bet even money he would make that ball. Well, I know that. you know, he is a great shot maker, and sometimes he may have a little too much confidence, and uh, he bet even money and lost. You know, he, you say he was even money to make it. Is even money good enough to shoot, you know, at a ball where you can lose if you miss it? I always thought the, you had to have a better per percentage of pocketing the ball than even money. He hit the second ball again and made a uh, ball this time. You know what? He's liable to come up with something. Maybe the <laughs> Sardo Li liable to come up with something. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody might start seeing this uh, eventually with the Sardo wreck. You know, all those years we broke the balls, clipping the head ball and all that. Maybe the Sardo rack thing might uh, automatically make you find a better break. You know, uh, considering that Atkins hasn't really played, in my opinion. A strong match. If he runs these balls, this match is going to be tied up at two games yeah. apiece. Well, I you can know? see him getting uh, like seven. I could see seven. He's got to shoot this, draw the ball one rail to the three, uh, five, and four. 
like this. I could see him getting seven and then having a bank at the uh, eight for the game. He should take a look at the eight right now because he's in an ideal position to shoot the eight, providing that it goes. Cue ball will then go two cushions and possibly he will be ended up, ended up on the four ball, the pink ball, that he can get out. Right. No, you're right, if it goes. But apparently it doesn't, or apparently he just isn't going to look. But the thing here is he's going to have a good chance to get seven. Although right now he uh, got a little out of line as far as going from the three to the pink ball. Well, he can draw it back and shoot the eight. Well, maybe. I'm not sure yet it goes. Well, he should take a look at the eight now. I think it's close, Billy. I don't know if he can get by that uh, 14, cut the eight in. But at any rate, uh, if he makes this, he's going to get on the hill here from the break. You know, S Scott had this uh, match in hand, and all of a sudden, you know what's just happened here, Billy? D. Atkins has run 15 balls without Scott getting to the table again. Yeah, but who could have possibly foreseen something like no, this? No, I'm, I'm not saying I predicted you know? it. You know, I'm just bringing up the statistics. No, That's know, a look. lot of balls to run. Watch oh, out. He's not going to like this. Watch he's out. He's going to at least leave a bank. Down. He's going to leave a bank for sure. I don't think that he did, but uh, he could have very easily. No. Nope. The seven and eight might have tied up a little bit. You know, by a hair, he can't shoot my electric chair bank. And once again, needing one doesn't mean you want it automatically, not at this caliber. Because one mistake, and you know, Scott is very offensive minded, and he can get in the game. Uh, you know, I like here, if he can hit the ball full. Well, he can't hit it. I was going to say hit the ball full, though you can't bank it to the pocket. Bank it into the balls and go upstream, but I don't think he can hit it that good. Does he have a dead one? Is that eight kissing off the six? No, I don't think so. I think he should kick the seven ball. Go up table Good with the shot. ball. Good shot. Oh, see you later. He gives that one up. Now all of a sudden we got a 2-2 two -two ball game it's when it looked two -two. like a route. It's 2-2. Two -two. Uh, from the last time uh, Frost was at the table, he felt really good about his position, uh, leading two to nothing, five balls to nothing, and shooting a shot to win the match with. The next time he came back to the table, that was he was confronted with, and the match was tied up at two games apiece. And uh, now he can't possibly be feeling good about his position. Well, well, he can feel good about one thing. It's his break. Because if it were D. Atkins' break, he'd really be in trouble. But at least he has the break going for him. And that's why it's so important to win that lag. For this situation, when it gets 2-2, two, two, you get that one extra break. You know, it's big. You, you give a Awfully guy big. two out of three breaks gambling and... It's a big edge, isn't it? It's awfully big. It's actually three out of five breaks, though. Yeah, three out of five. He was a little tentative in breaking the balls in this fifth and final game. He wanted to make sure that the corner ball didn't come out on him where he would You're lose right. the match. Things are like bad that. enough for him now. Uh, he, it would have been a disaster for the corner ball to come out. And, and uh, unlike the other racks, D. Atkins is not in that much trouble here. Although he <coughs> is in trouble, he could very easily sell out. But what do you do here, Billy? Is he looking at a combination bank, go up straight? I mean, that's that might be what he's doing. No, he's looking to move the balls, that's all. Let's see. Good shot survive and now i would have to say he got out of the break oh absolutely he got out of the break uh, there are more balls on his side of the table than there was on scott's side of the table and scott doesn't have anything around his hole so therefore you know he has to start creating and developing right now you know and before you do that you may have to start repositioning so therefore you have to put things in position to develop and he doesn't have anything in position yet 
So now he's, he's repositioning balls. That one went in the pocket. Atkins will probably shoot the 13 ball, the ball that sits on Scott's side of the table, just for the sake of moving it on the other side of the table and possibly creating something positive for yourself. Can you hit this ball, you know, uh, that's near the, uh, I, mean, I guess it's the uh, 15. Yeah, no, he can't. I thought maybe he can right. bank Thank it and hit it full enough to go one rail yeah, to the five. Back. Very good hit from where he was at. You know, controlling the cue ball like that when you're near the rail, distance away, and jacking up and sticking the cue ball, that's a pretty good shot. Yep. Now, I do believe that Frost, at least for the way he's addressing the table, has a good hit on the th red ball, the three ball. Yeah. Let's see what he does with the cue ball. Inside Engley, three positioning it behind the orange. A hair harder would have been, you know, a very good shot, but... D is not in trouble here because the six fell short of being a big threat. Even though at times you hate to move balls on your opponent's side of the table, if he comes off the one, he can get behind that green ball. But in doing so, he's going to open up this pack, and if he makes a mistake, it could be curtains for him. He made it. He made a mistake. Yep, he made a mistake. So therefore, if you're going to opt to shoot that shot, you have to make sure that you hit it accurately enough not to eat, not to sell yeah. out the game. And you know something else here? Scott's left-handed or he could never do this. You know, being left-handed helped in that particular situation. Right-handed, it would have been a lot tougher to control. Okay, Is now he has uh, an option here, Danny. He can shoot the nine here if you like and go into the balls, or he can play position for the nine, then play position for that 13-3 combination. Right. Wow, he didn't get back far enough. That was a weird, really a weak stroke. Yeah, but he can just go all out. He can go one rail into the, the five in that other ball, and he still has the combination if he didn't change it. No, oh, he's a little hot. See, he, he had a dead ball, and uh, he undeaded it. And he's a little hot about that because he knows <coughs> that from winning 2 nothing to 2-2, two, two, he became the favorite again with that inning, but he didn't get as many balls as he could have. He is yeah, looking. Atkins has to feel, feel pretty fortunate to even get back to the table considering what he did the last time he was at the table. So Scott Frost had a golden opportunity that he allowed to slip away from him, but he did manage to get three balls, so therefore... He is a favorite in this game, and plus balls are positioned in his favor as well. well. Is that combination uh, dead? No. No? No. Because it looked for a second he was looking to take a, a two-rail kick at it all. Instead, he decided just dunk and maybe make it dead now. He changed it maybe enough that it's, it's now dead. You know, that little nudge on the ball. Well, Scott's going to change that anyway. Atkins can't possibly get the best of this, considering the position of the balls, you know, because uh, Frost is going to have options where Atkins won't because of the position of the balls. So therefore, what he really needs to do is open up balls on the side of the table. I would, I would, uh, I would actually think about shooting that, that 13 ball into the pack and elevate, open up some balls on my side of the table right now. Yeah, I like that shot, but he doesn't. See, he can't possibly get the best of this because of the way the balls are positioned. He has nothing that's a threat on his side of the table. Right. So therefore, Frost can do a lot of different things with the cue ball yeah. D hasn't to create something offensively. D. Atkins didn't see the shot you called. And like you say, it would have opened some balls to his pocket, which he real desperately needs. He's losing 3 nothing. Hill Hill for the match. Well, he's going to bank this. He has to make sure that that uh, that he can c control the cue ball here. Hit the five on the nose. Oh uh, well, he didn't control the cue ball, but in spite of that, he made the bank. Oh, look at Scott. Scott just pointed his finger at something, and I'll tell you what, D can get right out here. There's enough balls that go. Aren't you going to say, Danny, you're a straight pool player? What would you do here? I think <laughs> you usually well, do that. You usually do that. Oh, okay, you know. Danny, you're a straight pool player. What would you do here? I'd shoot the one, try to fall on the 13. or you know, That's a good shot. Now uh, he got a perfect angle to get to the 8, you know, another ball he needs. He needs all of those right there. Draw the ball, get to the 8, get that out of the way. 
now, Danny, you, you, you're a straight pool player. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you shoot the eight and draw it to the 11 here? <laughs> I, I wouldn't hit balls here. I, you just got to miss the 11, and you got the, uh, I guess it's the 13 or 11, one or the other. And uh, that's what to do. He's got the five. Now he can go into that 11 off the five. Now you nudge the 11, I would say. Okay, he has four balls. He only needs four. The, the, the four ball will be the ball we will be shooting. It's a pink ball. And it looks that like the five. Nudge gently. That's all. Nudge the 11 gently, like that. He has Great five chance. balls. He's playing for three. Scott now takes the seat in the chair. A very uh, unhappy player right now because he knows he had the best of the position. He allowed Atkins at the table with a uh, with a bank, uh, but it carried, that carried the threat of winning. And also he's facing elimination now after leading the match 2-0. Oh, great speed. Great speed. Okay, he needs, uh, two. he needs two balls yeah. there, and it looks like to me that he's going to get them, Danny. The 13, excuse me, the 12 ball, which is the pink and white stripe, and then the red and white stripe, which is the 11. Isn't this game fickle? I mean, he was going along, had the advantage, and all of a sudden it's pack your bags, you're out of the tournament. And uh, just a short while ago, at least it seemed like a short while ago, Frost had total control of the match. You know what? I don't think he knows he's out. Well, he's playing for, no, he, he, he looked like he was playing position. So he's still dead, but he won the match from uh, a two-nothing deficit in games, and he said. Well, you know something, uh, Frost had the best of the position, plus he had three balls to nothing. You know, and he got a little careless, Danny, a little careless because he allowed Atkins at the table with a bank with the ability to open up balls. And that's something, that's the only thing he had to protect against, yep. and he refused to protect against that. He got a little careless. It cost him the match. Yeah, it did. And, uh, and you know what? It didn't take long. He sneezed, and the, and the match was over, and he was leading 2 nothing. The guy ran 15 balls. We're going to interview uh, D. Atkins. He, okay, he played uh, great. And is he leaving the arena? Where did he go? Okay, we're going to be right back in a moment with Atkins. So bear with us, and when he gets up here, we'll be back. Okay, we're in the booth with uh, Dean Atkins. Dean. It looked like uh, from the offset that Scott Frost had total control of this match. He won the first game, he won the second game, and uh, in the third game he had five balls and all of a sudden he had a thin cut on the seven ball which he opted to shoot. Danny disagreed in his uh, selection at that time, which I can't fault Danny or Scott for, for, for shooting the shot or for not wanting to shoot right, the shot. Right. But in the chair you were watching him, did you want him to shoot that seven ball? Well, pretty much. I figured it was about my only chance to maybe get something going. So. Uh He's up 5 nothing. I figure if it starts to get in a moving game, he's going to move everything up table, and I was pretty much done. So that was, that was probably my only chance to get back in the set. Well, since you said that, then I have to agree with Danny that he did shoot the wrong shot because when you're in at the table and you're one of the players at the table, what you have inside of you pretty much tells the story. Yes, if you wanted him to shoot that shot, most likely he shot the wrong shot. Right, right. Like, yeah, yeah, it was my only chance. I've had a lot of shots throughout history where... Uh, I was happy to see the guy shoot that shot over something else. It's like, you know, you're hanging, you're dead, and it's a percentage thing. You say, well, to have any chance, I hope he shoots this ball. And uh, he did. He hung it up. And you know what you did? You ran 15 from there before he ever got a shot again. You ran out, and then you broke and ran seven. Right, yeah. Earlier in the week, uh, Corey, I, these guys, a lot. Of, I don't play much one pockets. These guys outmove me, so if it gets into a... You know, a real tic-tac game or go everything goes up table. I feel like I'm in trouble. And uh, early in the week, Corey come with a break to where, you know, got a good chance to make a ball in a break. And uh, I I tried it, like, right before we started the match, and I scratched. And so 
and then when I got myself, you know, when I run out there, I thought, well, I got an opportunity here. I don't want to get into a moving game, so I tried the break, and it worked for me. So yeah, it worked that's out nice. Th that yeah. seems to yeah. be the mindset I thought you were in. You really didn't want to get into a moving game because no. you forced a couple of shots uh, earlier in the match. I thought you shouldn't have shot, but uh, right. in spite of that, you you forced a couple of shots that right. I thought that were really unorthodox. Right. But uh, and nevertheless, you know, you tied up a match at two games apiece after running 15 consecutive balls, and then we get to the last game. The ball position was definitely in favor of Scott Frost, and he allowed you at the table with that bank which was uh, which we, he felt oh you may not have sh uh, shot let's take a look at it let's take a look at that bank in the last game pat that enabled atkins to win the match okay here you are now what's going through your mind here well like you just said he's got some balls on his side uh once again he's i can see he's trying to make it a moving game he's done push two up table uh, my, I feel like my best chance to beat him here is to shoot. That's you know that's how I got back in the match. So I figured I might as well you know give myself a chance to win. And I thought that was an error on Frost's uh, behalf because, you know, he's going to outmove you. Right. He's got the better ball position. Right. What he doesn't want to do, he doesn't want to give you an out shot, if right. you will. And th and that was an out shot as you can clearly see now. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, he got a little careless. You know, he, he if he w if he just freezes the bottom rail, then once again it's a moving game and he's got the advantage. So. Right. He has many more options than well, you considering how the balls were positioned. Sure. Right. Did, did you know that? You weren't ducking there when you shot the 11. It was like win or lose because you didn't, you know, you didn't duck. I mean, he the had 11. a shot if you missed it. The game. The, the oh, bank. the game oh, yeah. ball. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I'm not going in that. Yeah, I definitely yeah. know I'm hitting the stack. And if, if I miss the ball, that's pretty it's much over. over. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. One other question. You were hitting the second ball on the break. Yes. Now, for days, everybody's been breaking fairly well hitting the head ball first all of a sudden you came with a break hitting the second ball mm -hmm. and it wound up very effective you made a ball on the break one time right. i never well, saw that it, well, uh, i've i played shannon it was the same thing i know i can't get in the moving game i'm both both games i broke on shannon i made a ball on the break so it's just something you know cory come up with and he says try it out you know and uh it's working so. you know I, I think that uh that you really have to take a look at what you just said in in, in, in a fair way and mm -hmm. you have to you have to be innovative playing any game mm -hmm. if you want to beat the odds right okay right. if you want to beat the odds then you have to come up with something new something mm -hmm. that no other player has done right because who knows how effective a shot can be mm -hmm. and l uh, until you start doing research and you know and start sure. exploring sure. and if you happen to explore and come up with an effective shot you'll have the edge on everyone until they learn it as well so sure. right. i think that uh, coming up with like like Corey did play with that nine ball brick he had sure yeah okay? he's creative i mean he's uh, yeah. he's absolutely creative and uh, like he said you know you're not going to sit and move with these guys i don't play one this is the only time i play one pocket all year is at this tournament so for me to sit and try to move with them, I have no opportunity. So, so I have to be aggressive and try to hope. So instead of playing the orthodox it. style, you become unorthodox in the sense, right, trying right. to create something that would give you an edge if, in fact, it worked and it did. Right, yeah, and it's a short enough phrase, I think, that that can happen. I'm sure if, you know, there were longer sets or something, the guy that moves the best would definitely get the edge, but uh, it's short enough to where I got an opportunity, you know, and I now, got a chance to win. Are you aware that there's three players left and you could get a buy and go right into the... Uh, you know the semifinal final match because uh, these two guys, you know, one of them had a buyback. I mean, they both had a buyback. So now you got three players left: Perica, Neville, and yourself. Who do you feel better playing, Neville or Perica? I would. Ha I'd probably have to say Neville. I believe he's going to yeah. give me a few more looks at you know where yeah. I could win. He's going to be aggressive. Uh, Perica, I'm sure he's going to move and try to keep me keep everything up table. So, and probably Neville. And not being uh, a great mover, mm -hmm. you're better off sh playing with a shooter than a mover. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. he's gonna give me opportunities. Well, I you think. played you played solid there, and you did what you had to do when it came up. And uh, uh, I'm impressed. And uh, congratulations, okay. and good luck the rest of the way. Okay, thanks, guys. Yeah, and once again, thanks a lot, Dean uh, D, for stopping up here and joining thanks. us. Thanks. And g congratulations uh, in the victory here. Good luck for the mayor of the tournament. We were just told not to leave, and why is that? A D, don't leave. Why? Why you want? We had to ask him something else. <laughs> oh, I understand. Oh, they want everyone to be still. Why they? Okay. I okay. once again, congratulations and thanks. good luck for the mayor of the tournament. Thanks, appreciate it, guys. All right. So, on behalf of Danny DiLiberto, this is Bill and Cardona saying thanks a lot for supporting Acastats. Give Pat a call. If you buy a phone, call now. One eight hundred eight two eight zero three nine seven.